thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I'm loving your house backdrop. <laughs> thank you. It hides a multitude of sins, don't worry. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> um, um, so, Paul, do you want to just introduce yourself to everybody and let them know what you do in property? <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Paul Thomas, and I am a partner in uh, LLP. We chose to go down, and it might come apparent later on why. Uh, called uh, Thomas Dawson LLP. Uh, what I do in property is um, I'm focusing predominantly on cash flow strategy uh, and anything that supports that cash flow strategy, a high cash flow strategy. Um, the, the, pre the premise was pretty much essays using rent to essay, buying my own potentially, and um, also I wasn't keen on HMOs in the beginning, but whilst doing some training and talking to other people um i find that hmos are less scary than they used okay. to be in my mind so hmos i will consider them in the right place in the right time um i guess uh and then with a buy to let uh as a sort of fallback strategy um one of the things i'm quite keen on doing is part of our portfolio um i was talking to someone the other day actually um, and I said, I used the word empire and <laughs> they were quite surprised. Like, empire, that's, that's, that's quite a good word. Um, so as part of our empire is, a property empire is to um, facilitate people who struggle getting their own homes. Mm -hmm. So using the rent to buy strategy. So um, as part of our business plan, we have about 10% uh, of our uh, asset portfolio earmarked for that strategy specifically. Um, so that's kind of it's a it's a mix, and I appreciate. Okay, you know, it's not it's not just straightforward, just this or just that or just the other. Uh, but the strategy is to facilitate a high cash flow, um, pretty much to replace an income that I used to have prior to doing this. So, okay, what did you used to do then? I used to work in IT. Okay. Uh, I worked in IT in various guises. So I worked, you know, from uh, enterprise support through to. Uh, custom success management, stuff like that, um, pre-sales. So all fairly well-paying jobs. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was it was time to move on, I think. It was, uh, it was after being made redundant, I think, for the fourth time in wow. uh, a long career, I decided, uh, you know, it was time to re-evaluate re my, um, where I am and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it, it did, it's kind of a, I'd say I almost fell into this in some sense um, because when I got laid off, um, and I don't know if this is pertinent, pertinent to your question, um, I decided not to go back into IT, but actually uh, I, I finished qualifying as a, a life coach some years prior and I thought, okay, that's what I'll do. Um, and so I did. And then sadly, in the course of events of the last year and a bit, both my sister and my mother passed away. Uh, my sister being really young, just a few years older than me really made me reevaluate you know why am i doing this why am i chasing a corporate job well paid all that kind of stuff but you know with comes with its own price <clears throat> uh and so that's what pivoted me to a doing my own coaching practice which i'd already trained for prior to that what five years prior um and then when my sister and mother both passed away very close together it left me with a property and that's kind of where this all kicked off. I thought, well, you know, okay, the whole new avenues opened up. And, uh, and as a result, you know, we sat down, my wife and I, and um, we decided, well, rather than just getting rid of it, which most people do to kind of sell a place and, you know, we have the cash, like, wow, fantastic. Um, we decided that we would actually use property to grow in, in a, a an empire, should we say? Uh, that that word, empire. That's great. That word, exactly. Uh, that's, I think this is where it came in the last conversation I had with somebody um, to grow an empire, so that we could hand on to the kids, because it's getting so expensive these days for the younger generation to buy homes and stuff. Um, and not that I want to hand them out things; I want them to kind of work for it and stuff, and learn the value of money and work and all that kind of stuff. But also to be able to do that in. Um, you know, five, 10, 15 years time we go, okay, right, you know, and they're all really interested in, in, in the property business purely from just what I do and what I talk about all the, you know, all the time. They say, dad, you're just going on about this all the time, but they're getting interested. My son now wants to, you know, he, 
if you've seen any of my videos on my channel, they've pretty much all been edited by my son. Uh, and you'll know he's, his, he puts his name very prominently at the end going edited by. <laughs> um, and so he's earning money that way. You know, he's, he's doing my social media side. Uh, and my little girl wants to you know, be involved in the interior design and things like that. So it's, it's becoming... Um, a family a place, empire. Yeah, a family empire. But I think, you know, and, and it's, it's having that long-term goal of, okay, it's not just for the here and now for, you know, us to make uh, a lot of cash and go, yay, fantastic. Um, and, you know, at some point I'll, I'll ease up and, and retire potentially. But it's for that longer term future. It's for making sure that those kids go. And everything that I do then is planned around that. I mentioned that we're in an LLP to start off with. People go, ooh, why are you doing that? Um, and it's purely because the circumstances for me facilitated it being in an LLP. Um, that will change. Don't get me wrong. You know, we're, we're going to stand up a, a limited company for uh, the rental side of business, for the rent to SA, which again requires a different business structure and things like that. So uh, the LLP was purely a gateway into getting the property going and on the market and being able to expand stuff and all that, you know, fancy but purely because of the, the complication with, with how the property is, it's kind of currently in trust. It's mm -hmm. not theoretic. It's, it's theoretically mine, uh, but it's in a trust, uh, which I'm now the sole beneficiary of. So you, it's, it's, a, it's a legal entity that kind of makes it easy to work. You've mentioned- Did I answer your question? You, you have, yeah. And you've mentioned a few things that some people that are new to property, they might not understand uh, some of okay. the things you just spoke about. Um, so can you talk a little bit about like uh, the business structure that you were saying and about trusts and what benefits that have, yeah. things like that? Okay. So from, and I should caveat this by saying this is not legal or professional advice. So, you know, each person needs to get their own specific advice for them okay so that was very professional that you slotted that in there because people you're like, well <laughs> people need to know that well so, something else i'm that I'm, I'm starting up as a result of my coaching practice is a property coaching uh, uh, practice as well okay, cool. so i need to be very clear uh, when i talk to people about this that you know you need to get professional advice so an llp um the from my perspective because the property is held in trust um, my mother, when she passed away, as part of her will, ceded the property to my sister in her, in her trust. My sister sadly predeceased my mother, but the whole you know, breaking of the trust, etc., hadn't taken place. It's all very quick. And so when my mother passed away, it automatically cedes into a, a discretionary trust. Now, the, the beneficiary of that trust is already passed. So I'm the only surviving member of the family and therefore I benefit from everything else. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I don't physically own the property. I don't, I, I, there's no mortgage on it, which is great, uh, but it's in the name of a trust. So if I were to do any work, I'm doing the work on the behalf of the trust. I can do that and that's absolutely fine. If you were to own the property in your own name, then yes, you could uh, put it into a limited company. You need to get professional advice for that, making sure that you do the right thing. You can keep it in your own name. So there's lots of other avenues that are open. Um, so the reason we chose an LLP was, uh, A, from a cash flow standpoint, so that any money that the property made on the, on the upfront, um, the way LLP taxation works is, um, the LLP is a, an entity, it's a legal entity. So. Uh, yes, you can have expenses, you can have, um, you know, there's certain allowances, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you as a partner in the LLP are taxed individually. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the great thing is because you have, you can have multiple partners. Okay, so my wife and I are in the business as partners, so I can allocate a portion of any income that comes in to her. I can portion some of it to me um after expenses and all that kind of stuff and the other thing i wanted to do is to actually be able to leverage the the expense regime which actually allows me to expense a car uh we're massive uh ev proponents um we have an ev at the moment we're going to replace the car with, with another, another ev in that structure i can write off a company car as an ev completely expense-free so the company pays for absolutely everything 
uh, well, the LLP, shall I say, the place for everything. So it worked in my circumstance. And I think that's the important thing that I need to stress. People need to kind of just go, oh, I'm going to have an LLP. No, you need to make sure that it actually works for you. So I needed the cash flow. So the LLP provided me with a direct cash flow. Um, and, you know, you, 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 can, you can structure it so that you can take it how and why you want. Some people give themselves a salary, which brings its own challenges. I've decided not to give myself a salary for now. I'm, I'm basically working off expenses. I've got my own sort of um, savings uh, at, at the back end. Um, I have some inheritance from my sister passing away. So all that kind of stuff has kind of worked in quite nicely into my circumstance. Um, and I think I should stress once again that, you know, each person's circumstance is individual. You really, really need to get professional advice because your situation may be similar to mine, but it may not work for you. So, you know, always, always get that professional advice. Um, and so, so the LLP uh, from that perspective was the reason we chose that. Now we also needed limited liability, oh sorry, a limited company. Uh, and that's for, if you're doing things like rent to SA, um, because it's a, the, the rent to rent model is deemed as a trading model by HMRC. It's not deemed as a, an investment model, which people would use a, uh, a special purpose vehicle for an SPV. You know, people have a limited company just for property and it's literally just for that, for investing, uh, they're, they're called SPVs. Um, but if your HMRC deems that if you're renting something and then renting it out again, uh, that's deemed as a trading establishment and therefore you need to have the correct SIC codes for that. Um, I've heard of instances whereby if you mix SIC codes, within a company structure, it can impinge on your ability to get a mortgage. So this, you know, it, it's it's not just a case of, yeah, I'll pick this easy structure for me. You've got to really look at the bigger picture and what it means for you and what you want to do. No, that's really good. Thank you for explaining that because um, I don't think I've interviewed somebody yet that's spoken in detail about those things. So thank you, I appreciate no. that. <laughs> you're welcome, you're welcome. Um, so at the beginning, you mentioned all the plans of everything that you want to do in your empire. At what stage are you at right now? So we were going to start off with an uh, with an essay, uh, and particularly in, in the property that I refurbished. Um, I'm not sure if you've, have you seen the videos on um, my channel? Not yet, no, that's fine, that's cool. So I've, I've documented the, the whole history kind of of where we're going and how we got there, et cetera, on the channel. Um, and I can provide you a link if you're interested in, in sending that out. Um, the idea was to do that as an essay purely because there's no, there's no mortgage on it. Um, so any, any kind of income coming in, less cost would be, would be mine, so to speak, and, and would yield a high cash flow. Um, that... Uh, pivoted away from that to a buy to let because I did the sums again. I repeatedly did the sums and it seemed like, oh yeah, it's fantastic. And you, you have all the tools out there that kind of uh, link, et cetera, that give you an idea of what you can rent your, um, your unit for, et cetera. Um, but in reality, um, when I redid the sums and had um, an estate agent come in, two estate agents come in and go, this is what we can get on the rental market and it will go like hotcakes. And I knew I was keeping an eye on the rental market as well. I thought for the additional, and for the additional benefit financially, there's far much more what? investment involved and time and effort and everything else to yield me that extra couple of hundred pounds a month. And I'm thinking, you know what? Let's keep it like it is now, given the situation we're in from a, from a COVID standpoint. I know staycations are gonna become a thing. The property is in a very much family orientated location. Yes, it could work with contractors. I mean, it's fairly close to a motorway. Yes, it could work for you know, professionals or families, et cetera. There's a hotel nearby, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, the, the factors that would cause it to be an essay uh, were there. But there was just that a level of uncertainty that, okay, you know what, let's get some cash flow going right now. Um, and so it's going to go on the market as a uh, single family home or professional share, not an HMO. Uh, I need to be mindful of that. Um, and we'll see where the market plays out in six months. With a six month AST, you'll see where it is. 
it's been done up to a really high professional standard. So it, with the view to having professionals in there, so with the view to having, um, you know, office workers, uh, traveling, you know, people from companies and stuff or, or company labs and stuff like that. So it's been done to that standard and fitted out as well. Um, so it's going to go on the market, uh, hopefully at the end of this week or early next week uh, as a single family home. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll see what the marketplace is like. Because the rental would be within a few hundred pounds, that's why we made that decision, kind of eking out as much as we can with as minimal amount of risk um, for a reward kind of balance. I think that's important to mention because uh, some people, you know, the shiny eye penny thing and they want to do the thing that makes them the most money. But the thing that makes you more money is often something that takes a lot more work. And so I think each individual does have to weigh up or well, what are yep. they willing to put in to get that, especially when a lot of people actually choose to give up their jobs to get into property. And then you might be thinking of doing rent to rent, rent to SA, which if you're doing a rent to rent, you're probably doing a rent to HMO, even though you could do a single let rent to rent, but that's a harder to work the numbers, I think. Yeah, then, you, don't, you don't hear it that much. Yeah, no, it is possible, but yeah, it doesn't happen very often. So yeah, it's a lot of work to actually get into cash flow situations in property. Um, so yes, thank you for bringing that up actually. That's okay. And I think a thing, a, a point that's important to mention is always to have a multiple exit strategies. So when we were doing up this place, uh, it was with the view to it being an essay. I knew full well that if we didn't go on the market as an essay or we didn't work as an essay, it would work as a family home. Yeah. If it wouldn't work as a family home, we could sell it again. And the valuations we had for it are staggering considering. Um, but it's having those exit strategies now having at least one exit strategy as a minimum, fantastic, we had two exit strategies. Um, we were never gonna sell it uh, purely because um, it's, a, it's a cash cow. It's literally um, bank <laughs> in, in essence. Um, but having the possibility of having those two exit strategies um, takes away the pressure from, and, and the stress in terms of, well, what do I do if this doesn't work? You know, And I think, it, for certainly for new investors out there it's always important that they understand have at least one exit strategy from what you plan to do with the place so if you go out and you look at a property and you go yeah okay we'll we'll buy that as a buy to let but if you can't sell it for whatever circumstance wrong area whatever it may be then you're kind of stuck with it having to work as a single let and then waiting in you know, five, 10, 15 years for that capital growth mm. to work its way in to be able to either leverage it or get out. Um, and, you know, that's, that's a more stressful position to be in. It's, it's livable, it's workable. It's a much more stressful position to be in rather than having from, uh, from the very get go, having at least one exit strategy. So if it doesn't work as a buy to let, we can flip it. Done. We're out. Where are you based, Paul? So I'm physically based in Bristol, but the property that we're talking about initially uh, is based in Reading because my family home was in Reading. Okay. And where are you looking to grow your empire? So the empire stretches along the M4, M5 axis. I live in, uh, so part of Bristol I live in is right on the axis of the M4, M5. So I can go, I'm looking at South Wales, uh, as far out as, New, as, as Swansea. I'm looking south down into Cornwall, Denver, um, stuff like that, down as far as Plymouth, Exeter, uh, and then up as far north as Birmingham. And I am, I will consider back into Reading as well, purely because I have a place there uh, and I've got contacts there. I've got you know, trades there. So if the right thing comes up and I was looking at a rent to SA deal um, not too long ago in Reading, um, purely because it works for me. It's not too far down the road. And I think it's quite an interesting point you raised all these places I look at are roughly around an hour from me. Yeah. I mean, hour and 10, hour and 15, we're not, we're not gonna split hairs, but uh, yeah, they're, they're all kind of an hour. Birmingham's an hour from me. Plymouth's maybe hour and a half, mm -hmm. two hours maybe max, but that, that's, it's, that's the very edge we're talking about. Uh, and again, Reading is just over an hour from me. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge circle. And I think one of the things that I did in my training 
Um, and I did, I did a fair bit of training um, before I kind of just jumped into this thing. Um, is to, as a newbie, start local. And a lot of people say, oh, but there's nothing in my area. And I'm like, no, there is. Just you need, you need to look harder. I was talking with a prospective um, coaching client just the other day, and she lives in a in, in the south, uh, uh, yeah, the south of, south of England, and it's fairly expensive where she is. You know, she tells me the average property price is like four hundred and something thousand. I said, but that's exactly where you live. What about maybe twenty minutes or half an hour out? Oh yeah, then I can get something. Well, so why not? What's stopping you from doing that? You know, it's uh, people think, oh, it has to be the very, the very epicenter of where I live. No, it doesn't. I mean, 10, 15 minutes is you know, half an hour is not that far. And you will find near, nearby neighboring villages and towns and, you know, habitations that have something that you can do. And you're not going to go, you're not going to buy every single one of them. You just need one property. Mm. Start with that keep looking start with that keep looking you know you're not going to buy 10 properties in a day it's not like you're going to the supermarket and you just say okay right, i'll have 10 of those i don't think no. any, many people could afford to do that either no no, no. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. and in terms of looking for uh, your next investment do you look for yourself or do you work with other people to find your investment so i i'm open to working with sources i i've come across good and bad shall we say um, I come across, um, I came across a, a source the other day and he was incredibly professional. The, the stuff he sent me, including the breakdown and the refurb cost and everything, he costed it out. He, this guy hadn't just gone, oh, yeah, I'll have that, I'll have an option on that. Okay, here we go, go to my list. No, 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 no. This guy had sat down and spent a good amount of time, worked it out, plans, everything, you name it. I mean, it was a, like a, seven or eight page document he sent me fantastic it wasn't what i wanted at the time i mean it was it was in the kind of the kind of property but it was just outside of my budget at the time i decided i wasn't going to push it on the other hand i've had guys send me uh, a screenshot of a fantastic uh, gif this is this is up for sale i'm like but where's the bump behind it and it's literally, you know, you, you know they've taken it off right move or Zupra or something like that. No effort, nothing involved in it. And, you know, the comparables are way off. And you think, hang on. And this is, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up because if you use a saucer, I think, and you don't do your own due diligence, you are, what's the phrase? A fool and his money are soon parted. Say that again. A fool and his money are soon parted. Oh, yes. Yes, that is true. Yeah, you, always you're, you're to do your you just have to. Um, I think it's good to work with people. Um, if you can't find, if something, <laughs> find something you can't, then there's nothing wrong with that. But you do yeah. also have to check that uh, what they said is true. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, it's too easy to lie to people. Well, yeah. I don't think it's too easy to lie to people, but other people do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you, you got to be true to yourself absolutely yeah. and so I'm, I'm not averse to that man and people charge you know we're talking three four thousand this guy who i said was extremely professional but his fees are phenomenal he he takes i think it's uh, it worked out at like 15 or 20 grand but he's talking about the final you know it's based on the value of the house that you're buying and all that kind of stuff so but he's putting in the effort for that kind of money. Yeah. He, he doesn't come to me every day with deals. He doesn't, come, he doesn't send out to his list every day for deals because he's putting in that quality of work to justify giving him 15 grand for that deal. You know, some of it's up front when you, when you, when you uh, agree to take it on, the rest is on completion. Uh, so yes, there's, there's, there's good and bad sources out there. And I'm not averse to using a sourcer if it fits, but I'm not um desperate to go out, oh, i need to have this yes sure in our, in our business plan we have uh, a, 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 a kind of a stated aim to say we will have x number of properties by x point of time but that doesn't mean i've got to go out and write just snap up everything that looks right somebody sends me you know, on an image you know that 
that doesn't do me any favors because you could lose thousands and you know and we're talking several thousands here if you do with a sorcerer etc so it's i'm open to the idea but equally there's a lot to be learned and gained from going and doing your own research so at the end of last week um i had a string of bookers for three days i was out on on, on out of, of the office so to speak uh, on site in south wales and i looked at a whole host of properties some were okay some were absolute hell holes and some were uh okay they needed some work and it, you could make them work uh, and stuff like that i think nothing beats going out there and actually just looking at the stock yourself you get a feel for an area you get a feel for what's available you get a feel for what you don't want to touch what you absolutely have to have or is just no financial incentive in doing it because it's completely done up. It's all it's all ready to go, and you're just sitting on a capital growth scheme there. You just have to wait and hope that it grows. So, yeah, use sources absolutely. I'm not saying don't use sources. Do your own due diligence absolutely if you do that. But get some of your own sort of you know boots on the ground time looking at places, particularly where you want to invest. So you know what's there, you know kind of the areas to avoid and you build up contacts. You know, I spoke with, uh, over the course of that three day stint in South Wales, I spoke to four, five different estate agents, all from the same company. And the, the interactions were interesting. Some were like, yeah, here's the house, off you go, go and have a look. Others were like, they came along with me, talked to the property, all that kind of stuff. And, and the one that, had the most interaction and you, and you gel with people differently. There was this young 24 year old guy uh, and we were in this house and he says, oh yeah, and that boiler probably needs doing. And I looked at it and it was a good 25 years old, easily, easily. Um, and I, cause I knew the brand, I'd, I'd seen the similar one in, in another, another property and I knew how old it was. Um, so I said, yeah, it's about, it's about 25 years old. He says, that's older than me. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> You've got this, you know, young whippersnapper, but this young chap, right? He is hungry. He brought me two other deals that are not on the market at the time. Brilliant. Now I didn't, I didn't kind of take them up, but it's having that boots on the ground, spending time with the agents. And this guy didn't know me from Adam before the viewing. He just seen me there. We kind of just got talking about the property and all that kind of stuff. And just as I was leaving, he says, "Oh." Um, are you going to buy uh, cash? Are you going to do mortgage? Well, I was like, well, it depends on how much it is. I can probably buy cash. Uh, he goes, oh yeah, there's an absolute hellhole in uh, in some place. Is got you know it needs full modernization. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. How much is it? He says, oh, it's about ninety grand. I'm like, okay, let's go and have a look at it. And we couldn't because of the, their policy of not same day viewing and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine. But the fact that he was hungry enough to bring me a deal that was not on the cards at all. You know, literally just come on the market that morning so nobody'd seen it is you don't get that by using a saucer because you build those relationships yourself but the saucer might have those relationships yeah yeah they might do they might do but if you're there on the yeah. <laughs> sorry i missed that they don't all have it i'm just saying some of them might all no, no no that's true that's true cool. all right cool well i've taken up lots of your time uh just cool. before we finish up if there was one message uh, that you could give to somebody that was just slightly intrigued about getting into property, what would that one piece of advice be? Good question. Educate yourself. There's loads of free resources out there. You don't have to take a paid training course, although they, they can help, they do help uh, in various ways, but educate yourself. Um, I think I wouldn't be where I am now without spending hundreds, hundreds of hours educating myself. YouTube is a massive resource. It's all there. Focus on the UK market predominantly because there's loads of UK specific uh, videos out there. Um, yeah, I, I would avoid the anything that's not UK specific because it's not going to help you. But educate yourself because it gives you a flavor for what's possible um 
it gives you an understanding of um, what you want to do, what kind of um, aspects of property um, are gel with you type thing. Uh, and then, you know, you may go on to a, you know, paid education from there. That's absolutely fine. But without a shadow of a doubt, you know, if, it, if reading's a thing, get a couple of books. Simon Zucci's book, um, Property Magic, I think, uh, is it Property Magic? Yeah. Simon Zucci's world, world famous book is a really good read. Um, and and there's, there's a few others out there I could name. Um, but either read or if you're visually uh, driven, then YouTube is, is, is a really good go-to to get yourself an understanding of what's possible, what's not possible. Um, be skeptical. Okay, because you will come across some people who go, ah, absolutely easy, yeah, just do that. You know, fantastic, it's done. There's a lot of hard work involved in doing that. I like Simon Zucci's quote where he says, you work hard once, but then you keep on reaping the reward, mm -hmm. you know, and that, and that's fine. And you, you just you just keep on doing that. And that's absolutely fine. But so I guess the one takeaway would be educate yourself, learn a little bit. Cool. Thank you so much. I really My pleasure. Your time and your knowledge and your experience. Uh, uh, it's been lovely uh, this interview. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a fantastic day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've, I've enjoyed it. Thanks very much. Anna. Appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. And send me the link to your channel because I'll pop the link uh, in the description so people can then click and watch. I will, I will All right. do. Thanks, Shona. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Okay.